Hey everyone, Leo with Dreamy Tree here. Today we're putting together our Sweet Dreams clock. It's a very whimsical little piece that I'm sure you're going to enjoy and I'm sure your recipient will enjoy it as well. I have a feeling that a lot of you will be making these for your kids or grandkids or maybe just someone that appreciates the old clocks, the ones that are not digital. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we've got, um, got some fun things here for you. Some little craft therapy. Let's take a look at what we have. Now, obviously, you already have everything cut out. The supplies that you need are listed on our website under the supply section. So uh, your table is going to look a little bit like this. And we're going to begin by doing some simple paper piecing like we always do. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm just going to go over a couple things here these little guys here that I've cut out of a white glitter paper. I went ahead and inked with a little bit of uh, turquoise. And one thing that you're going to want to do to get these prepped is take a dowel. This is a 3 8 inch dowel and just take and pinch the tips of the little feathers here and just curl them back a little bit just to kind of train them so they're not so flat. You can see the difference here between the flat one and the curved one. You can see that one just above my finger here, how it's nice and curved. Okay, so you're gonna do that to both of these. So again, just kind of start at the tip, pinch it between your finger and the dowel, and just roll it on home. There you go, very simple. You may have to do that again later on if it decides to flatten out, which it really shouldn't. The fibers in the paper should stay put. Okay, so you're going to do that to all four of them. There's two for each side. And these little guys here, I wouldn't worry too much about training or manipulating them. Okay, now the actual wings, you can see here that I've already pre-folded some of these. You can see that there's a little bit of dimension to them, as opposed to this one here that started off very flat. And that's how yours is going to look. I also hit this with a little bit of turquoise. You'll notice that. There's some tabs here. You can go ahead and pre-fold those. Now to create the dimension on the wings, you'll notice that there's a little score mark there in the center. All you need to do is just take one of your fingers and then I'm using my thumb and my middle finger to do the pinching and my top or pointer finger to press down so that I can pinch it and create that crease. And then just kind of very gently work your way down that crease and slowly kind of release those fibers in there. And then ultimately, you can give it a good press and pinch like so. So you can see the difference there. You can see how we've got some nice shadows and highlights in there. And that's really what we're looking for. Okay, same thing with this one. I'm just going to go down the row here and just give those a press. You don't want to squeeze this and bend it completely the first time around. It may result in, uh, well, other areas kind of taking on that load and then getting warped or creased. If you crease it a little bit, that's bound to happen, but you don't want it to be unsightly and the, the focus of, um, you know, when you look at this, you don't want that to be the main focus. You want that, if that does exist, to just barely be there. And these guys down here, same thing, just kind of fold and squeeze at the score mark, like so. There you go. Okay, so now you've got a nice dimensional piece. You can see how the shadows and the highlights catch that. Same with this. You're going to repeat that a total of four times because there's these wings are going to go back to back so that even if you look at the back of the clock, you'll still see some nice wings. Okay, so two for each side. Go ahead and get that done, and then you can put those off to the side. All right, next up, what we're going to do is we're going to assemble our clock face, actually. Okay, and you can see it here. You're going to want to find this little black piece. Well, in my case, it's black. You may have cut it out of a different color. And you'll notice that on this piece <clears throat> are a set of little markers. You're going to want to find this set of little eyeballs and just make sure that you put them facing this way, where this little eyeball it looks like an egg shape is kind of coming out to the left a little bit more. So not where this one is going up right. You want it in this orientation, okay? So go ahead and get that glued down into place. I gave my glue bottle some extra TLC today so that we wouldn't have to fight during assembly. And 
Let's get that right in place there, because that is going to help us with the alignment of this piece here. Okay, obviously we're gonna glue this down and just make sure that the eyeballs are nice and centered there. Okay, just like that. You got your 12 and your six up at the top and bottom. So go ahead and get your glue on the actual clock face. And well, maybe we are gonna fight a little bit today, Mr. Bottle. We'll see. All right, just make sure you work the perimeter here. That's gonna be the most important. We don't want that peeling back. And then there are some little details here on the mouth. So try to get some glue up into the very ends of those details. And again, as we put this down, the little hole in the center where the mechanism goes obviously is gonna line up with the hole on the black piece, but just make sure that you get the little border for the blue eyeballs in the correct spot. Here we go, just like that. And I did ink this with a little bit of tan around the outside. This is AC Vanilla. Okay, make sure that that is nice and solid. And now while we have this here, I'm gonna take and, um, well, we're gonna add some hearts. All right, so you're gonna have a total of eight of these tiny little hearts. And instead of the one and two, the four and five, seven and eight, um, we are going to use hearts to give it kind of a lovely, loving Valentine's theme. Okay, and all of the tips of the hearts are gonna be pointing in towards the center of the clock. So make sure that you use the little markers here to position your hearts appropriately. And we take the guesswork out of it. Just make sure you get it right in between those little markers. And that's that. So for the one and two, four and five, seven, eight, ten, and eleven, you're going to repeat this process until you get all of your hearts in place here. And then we're going to put in some eyeballs, some more eyeball details here. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment. Okay. So I've got my hearts all in place and you can see how cute that looks. Almost has a little bit of a Alice in Wonderland sort of feel. Now I've got this little piece here that is going to make up the top part of our clock's little face. He doesn't have a name yet. I don't know what we should name him. What do you guys think we should name him or her for that matter? Okay, so you wanna make sure that you grab the you pop this in the right way. It's kind of just like a little puzzle piece. It's gonna go nice and flush up against, in my case, the vanilla color there. So it should look like that. Okay, next we've got, we've got the whites of the eyes. Okay, and those are gonna go right here like so. Got a little bit of fuzz on there from when I was inking. So just get a little bit of glue on the back of these, just a few little dots. And that little center part there where these two sides are joined could be a little delicate, so be careful. And if you got a little too much glue on there, just wipe it off. And this is just gonna match up with the blue section here. So just line that up as accurately as you can, like so. Here we go. And then finally, finish it off with the two little black circles. And I'll probably end up using uh, some liquid pearls or maybe a rhinestone for the pupils. And there we go, last one, just a little dot. Just get that nice and centered so that in my case, I've got the, uh, it's called AC pool is the color. Got a nice even border going all the way around. So right now, it looks like his pupils are huge. Again, we'll put a little dot of either some um, liquid pearl or a tiny little rhinestone in that area there. Okay, so I'm gonna put this underneath my mat so that it can dry nice and flat for us. It's gonna come in handy here in a little bit. And in the meantime, I'm gonna kind of pre-assemble some of the more simple things. 
Uh, one of which is the little mechanism that actually rings the bell. Uh, and the bell we'll kind of talk about later on. It's actually made up out of some styrofoam balls. Okay, so we have two uh, pieces that look like this. This is what the bells are actually gonna be glued to. It's just a simple three-dimensional box. And you can start off, you'll notice that there are some little triangles there. We're gonna put our glue on the triangle. Just a tiny little dab, you don't need a lot. And it's almost too much. We'll tuck that in behind the neighboring wall. Line it up and just press and hold like that. Okay, the other ones I haven't touched yet. And then you can go over here. Got another triangular tab. Just a couple of tiny little dots of glue on that. And if you want, you can kind of dab it down a little bit. Tuck that behind. Bring it in so it's 90 degrees. And push and press that, hold that tab up against that wall there until it sets. Okay, so again, we're gonna be making two of these. Process will be identical. Okay, and then we've got two more tabs here. We'll just put glue on both of them. And just bring that in one at a time, tuck it behind and press and hold. Give that a few seconds. And then just go over to the other one and press and hold that one in place as well. Like so. Okay, and we're actually, we're gonna end up taking these tabs here and gluing them to the inside of the actual clock structure. Okay, so we're gonna leave this as is, like that, with it open like that, and put that off to the side. And we're gonna repeat that process one more time with this guy here, so I'll do that again. And again, just starting off by putting a little bit of glue on that tab there and then tucking it behind its neighboring wall. Get those two ends here to match up so that you have a nice 90 degree angle here. Keep holding that. And then moving on to our next tab. Now that last time there, I did two tabs at a time. You don't have to do that. You can do one at a time if you're more comfortable with that. No right or wrong way of doing this, okay? So again, tucking it behind i going to grab my two fingers there and squeeze that tab right into place, just like that, okay? And if you need to move these out of the way, you can. These little the tabs that glue to these, I'm sorry, the, the walls that glue to these triangular tabs. Okay, so we can bring that back in, press and hold. There we go. And that just leaves one more little tab and that is why I did two at a time there because the tabs are on the same side. So, but that gives me an opportunity to show you a quick little trick. Just grab a scrap piece of paper, throw a little bit of glue right on the very corner and just use that to paint the glue into that area. That's it. My glue is there and I just continue like I did before by pressing and holding that tab into place. All right, so we've got another piece that looks just like the first one. And we'll just put that off to the side and let that set. Okay, so this is one of the feet. And you'll notice that there's this little tab here. So we're gonna apply our glue to this tab to simply close this up and make it all one piece. Let me get that glue out to the very edges there. And just bring it around line it up with the other side here. It is an odd shape, so just make sure that you in fact get it lined up accurately. And sometimes working with black paper makes it harder to see the highlights. So if you're doing the same, take your time and just make sure that you get this aligned as accurately as you can. And just press and hold that. Okay, and then I'm gonna take and you'll notice that we have three tabs here at the top, which is actually the bottom, it's gonna be sitting this way. 
and we're going to close this up. There's a little square piece that we're just going to close just like a little pizza box. So get your glue on these three little tabs here. And I would definitely use your finger or whatever tool you've started using at this point to spread that glue out. And then put my fingers underneath here through the bottom so that I can apply an upward pressure so that when I push this down, it's actually making contact with those tabs. Okay, and that's essentially what we're looking for. Okay, so there you have it. We're gonna leave these alone. You can actually kind of fold them out just to train them and get them ready for their final position. Okay, and that's what it's gonna look like. And we do have some panels for this, but we're gonna let that, we're gonna do that later. So one more time here with the other leg, same thing. Find this little tab at the end of this main section here and apply your glue to that tab. And spread that out. And we're gonna tuck that under. Get that lined up. And there we go. That one went a little bit easier for me. You can see what that's looking like. And then we have, uh, as I mentioned, we have some little markers on this to help you figure out which part is the front so that when we go to put this into the actual clock structure, it'll be that much easier. So take the top of the little pizza box, move it out of the way and bring those tabs up a little bit. Apply your glue to the three little tabs there. Just be careful with that. It's a pretty small little area. Don't overdo it. Nice and easy. And then just take your finger and work that glue around to the very edges there. There we go. And then you can take the little pizza box top, close it up. And again, I've got my finger inside. If you can't get your finger in there, just take a dowel and push up from inside that way. Okay, there you go, just like that. And again, we can take these and fold them out just to get them ready. And that's that for that prep, okay? And there's just one more little exterior feature. And this is the little mechanism that rings the bells. And it's very similar to the feet. You'll notice that there's a little tab on one side here. We're gonna begin by putting glue on that tab. Very simple, not a lot. Spread that glue out if you can. Got a little glue crust on there, we don't want that. Okay, and then wrap it around to the other side and join it like so. You can actually, you should be able to lay, the, lay this out flat. There we go. Okay, so we just essentially made it one continuous solid piece like so. And this one we are actually going to close up completely. So you can go ahead and begin. Actually, I'm gonna start at the bottom. We got three tabs on the bottom. Let me clean this nozzle off. Go ahead and put your glue on the three tabs on the bottom of this. We'll close that up first. And spread that glue out. Okay, and then again, just closing it up like a little pizza box. Get that nice and centered. If you need to kind of nudge the walls in a little bit, you can do that. Now I did hit this with a little bit of purple ink, uh, but again, that's all gonna depend on, it's all gonna depend on what color pattern paper you're using. Okay, all right, so the bottom is in place. We've got three more tabs up on top, just like the, just like the leg or the foot of our clock. Throw a little bit of glue on those three tabs Try to get that glue out to the very edges and then just close up that little pizza box and just press and hold that for a moment while it sets. Okay. There we go. Okay, now at this point, when you have it together like this, if like for this, for example, 
This paper is, um, well, it's a white core. So after you fold it, some of that white shows through. If you wanna cover it up with a little bit of ink, now's the time to do that. So I'm gonna do that, uh, but before I do, we have these two little pieces here. We cut them out of a silver foil, and you'll notice that there's a little score mark there. And what you wanna do is just fold that at the score mark, okay? So that you have just that little area there. You can see that. And you're gonna do the same thing with the other one. And then we're gonna glue the main part of this back to back like this. So we're gonna sandwich these two together. So go ahead and throw a little bit of glue on the back side of one of these sections, like so. And just pop the other one right in place, nice and back to back. Now I've got a silver foil here. So if you are working with foil, make sure you don't have any glue on your fingers before you go squeezing these together as it can blemish the foil and there's really really no way of getting it off without destroying the paper okay so these two pieces are together and then these little sections here we did not put glue on these little tabs we're going to put some glue on them and we're just going to glue them to the top of this little structure that we just created doesn't matter which side just pop that right on top and just press and hold that down for a moment while it sets. Okay, again, the, uh, as far as old fashioned clocks go, this is the little hammer that will ring the bell. Well, at least, you know, in our imagination, this is purely aesthetic, it's not actually gonna ring the bells. The bell's actually created out of styrofoam and glitter. And again, I'll, I'll show you that when we get to that point here. Okay, so essentially that's what we're looking for. It looks good. Just make sure that the top part, the little hammer or the bell, yeah, the hammer is actually making good contact with the top. And don't let it go until it is. And that looks great. So put that off to the side and move on to the next thing here. Okay, one more thing that we can put together before we start uh, assembling our structure is on this piece here with the little door uh, we do have a little panel that goes on this. Now the heart is gonna line up perfectly with the heart on the black piece while the rest of this is going to give us a nice border. Okay, so go ahead and throw your glue on the entire piece, especially out towards the perimeter. Just a little bit in the middle is fine. And let's get this in place. Again, match up the heart as accurately as you can. It sh should sit on there like a little shadow. And then the rest of it should have a nice even border all the way around, top and bottom, left and right, minus the heart, of course. Okay, and then finally, we have this little heart, this larger one. This is actually gonna go on your clock mechanism, the last little heart that you have. So make sure you have that. Put that away for now though. And we'll put some glue on the back of this larger heart and just pop that into place. And that's gonna go right here. And there we go. Okay. So, can leave that be for now and begin getting into the main, uh, the main assembly here. So these are the two pieces that make up the actual clock structure. You wanna definitely go ahead and get all of your fold lines, your score lines folded here. And it's gonna be very important that we do this in the correct order <clears throat> and the correct orientation. We have little markers on here to make sure that you don't goof it up and I will make sure that I am also paying very close attention to them so that I don't goof it up, in which, in, in turn, making sure that you don't goof it up. Because, uh, yeah, well, the engineering on this had to be, the sides had to be a specific length in some areas. So that's why these sections here are not all identical. So we're gonna to need to pay special attention to the assembly of this so that we don't have to recut and redo things. Okay, typically I 
pre-fold things off camera, but this was a good time for you to stare at me doing this so that you know how important the next few steps are gonna be. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put these two sections together and make them all one solid piece. And then for those of you that have worked with a lot of our projects and uh, those of you that are familiar with the term skeleton piece, we've got those skeleton pieces to help us um, form this. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at here is you'll notice that there's some center tab, there are center sections here, and this is a center section here, okay? And one of these tabs has a B, one of them has an F, okay? One has an F, one has a B. I'm gonna make sure that both Bs are at the bottom and both Fs are at the top. So you don't want it like this. You want the, the F up on top and the B on the bottom. And we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect these right here using these two tabs. Now the reason that there's a slit in this tab right here is because that's where the wings are gonna go in to the actual clock. So we needed to kind of segment this, but that's okay. Let's take that glue and rub it out all the way to the very edges so that you can make this nice and seamless. Take your other piece, lay it right on top. You kind of have to do two and one here and that's okay. Ideally, I would look at where the little slit is and just make sure that that little line on this side and this side kind of join perfectly. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over onto itself at that seam where we added our glue and press that down and there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna take the other end here. I should be able to do this flat, I think. Yep, and we'll put some glue on these two tabs and make this all one continuous piece. Spread that glue out to the very edges here, just like so. You can lay that down flat and then take this side here and just bring it over and line it up nicely. And there we go. Okay. And if you want, go ahead and fold it at the seam where we added the glue, press that down and there we go, okay? So, next thing we're gonna do, and I don't think it really matters if we start on the front or the back, fold just either side, fold these tabs down. Okay, now you're gonna find these little geometric pieces here, and let's take a look at Take a look at the little labels here. So I have a B here and a B here. That means that's the back. So out of these two geometric shapes, look for the one. Uh, you'll see here, I have an FL and an FL, a B and a T. Top, bottom, front liner, front liner. So this is for the front. FL is front liner. Let me actually, let me pencil this in a little bit so you can see what it looks like. FL, FL, there's a T. This is all gonna be covered up by other pieces, so that's okay. All right, so you see that? T, top, bottom, front liner, front liner. These are just identifiers that tell us that this is the front. So where are you? we're actually working on B, the back. So here you have BL, back liner, okay? And then we have the top and the bottom, which is important. You need to make sure that you follow that orientation as well. Okay, so we're on the back, we've got our Bs here, and up here on top, there's a little T. So that is your top of your back, which means that this side here, because this is the top, this is the top, there's a B here for bottom, this is top, this T, and this edge right here needs to line up with this B right here. Okay, so we can slide that in. And that's what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna anchor this, starting with where the T is and this little edge right here. So if you look at it, you'll notice that there's an edge here and then it curves. Okay, and this is the edge here that we need to align with the B, okay? 
So just make sure, and actually it might help to pull these up and take a look and make sure that the other tabs are in the correct location. Okay, but that's the most important thing to do right now. Just make sure that this B is lined up with the T. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I think it does. But that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna anchor that in place. So we're gonna peel this back and just put a little dot of glue on this tab. You don't need to cover the tab completely. It's just kind of to help you uh, with the structure. Okay, and just press and hold that down. Make sure this little skeleton piece, you're pushing that all the way up against the inside there. Okay, and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna do-si-do -si -do on down to the bottom here. And where our B is, we're gonna make sure that the other B matches up with that, okay? And just a couple little dots of glue there. And get that right into place, like so. If you want, you can actually press down from the inside so that you don't end up warping this, okay? But that's that. So we got <clears throat> top, bottom. Now we're gonna go over here to the corner and we're gonna start on one of these sides and get one of these anchored so that we're not doing uh, anything completely clockwise or counterclockwise. We wanna kinda of offset things a little bit. So pick a tab over here by the BL. Doesn't matter which one it is. It could be the one above or below it. And bring that down onto this section here. Just like that. Just make sure that you're pushing this up against this wall, okay, as much as you can. All right, so then we can do -si do over to the other side, pick a tab. Again, doesn't have to be the exact mirror of the other one. And just throw some glue on there, press that over, and glue it down to our little skeleton piece. Okay, so at this point, we've got most of this intact here. We're just gonna go around and just pick a tab, any tab get it glued down, and then of course, head over to the opposite side to uh, kind of balance this out and do it more evenly. So I just did that one, I'm gonna head over here. And the reason I just flipped it over was because I like to use my table to kind of create that downward force so I don't go warping the paper. Okay, so I've got a little bit of glue on the tab, I can fold it over and press down from the inside and I'm taking my hand here and I'm pushing this wall up against this little liner or skeleton piece so that it's making really good contact with the very edge of that. Okay, so I've got a few more here. I got some over here. I can probably do two at a time just to speed things up. So just throw some glue on two of them now. And you can fold that over. Make sure those tabs are in fact underneath and just press down, push that wall in, make sure it's in as far as it can go. Okay, so we got those and we can move over here. We'll do these two. There we go. Fold those over. You can put, you can, you can, uh, Glue them down this way too. You can push in from this side here and push down, get your finger in there and just kind of sandwich that tab and the little skeleton piece between your two fingers. That works too, either way. Okay, and we'll go over here. We'll do these two tabs right up at the top. So just a little bit of glue, fold them down. I'm gonna do this method, where'd they go? There they are. Okay. There we go. That right, looks great. And just got a few more here. You can see them all. We'll do these two here at the bottom, or on the side, I should say. Just a little bit of glue. Fold those over. I'll do this one this way. So the nice thing about this little skeleton piece is it keeps this whole structure um, nice and in shape. 
so that when we put everything else together, it just makes it a lot easier instead of dealing with a floppy exterior or side. All right, so I put glue on these three tabs here. I'm just gonna bring them in. At this point, this thing is pretty much set on its shape, so we don't need to do -si do anymore. We can just kinda go in a row. Okay, and that just leaves this guy here. And press that down. Okay, so that's the back. Now you probably already guessed that we're gonna do the same thing with the front. Okay, and that's gonna actually be a little bit easier because this thing already has a shape. So we'll take these tabs and fold them out to the exterior. So we can take our little skeleton piece and get it in here without a fight. Now again, remember, you wanna make sure that the T matches up with the T on this piece, okay? All right, so we already have the back in place, so we know for a fact that, well, this can only be the front. So we'll get that in there. And then you can see how there's a straight edge here at the T that's gonna line up with this tab and this, this edge here, okay? Just make sure everything is in the right spot. There we go, just like that, okay? So, go ahead and put a little bit of glue. We're gonna anchor it right up at the T. It's a tiny little bit of glue there. Come back here. Okay, just bring that up gently. Make sure it's nice and centered. Nice and flush. There we go. We got it spot on. Okay. And then we go to the bottom and get the bottom in place like so. Check out the other tabs too. Make sure the other tabs align nicely with the natural progression of the angles there. Okay, so just a little bit there on the B. Flip that tab over right on top. And just press and hold that in place. And again, take a look at the other tabs here. Make sure that those are lining up. And they are. There we go, that looks good. All right, so now we can go to either the left or the right and get that in place. And that looks pretty darn good, actually. All right, so we'll go here, start on this tab. I'm gonna dab that a little bit. And just fold that over right onto that section there and press and hold. Again, you can flip this over and use your table if you'd like. It's up to you. And then we'll head over here to this side and get that glued down into place. Just bring this up slightly and fold that tab over onto our little liner, Mr. Skeleton. Okay, so all four sides now are joined. We are gonna kind of dosey do a little bit here. So let's go up to the top. And I think we can just do these top two real quick. We don't have to do one at a time for that. And just press that down. There we go. And bring this one down. And there we go. Okay. And then let's go to the bottom. We'll do these bottom two. Just bring that up, press that up against our little liner here. And the next one, there we go. Just like that. Okay, so we got top, down, top, bottom. And let's go over to one of the sides. Doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna go over here. And I'm gonna do these two. I'll fold that over, press and hold for just a moment. And we'll do this one too. There we go. We'll head over here opposite of where we just were. And we'll do these two. There we 
go. And this guy here. All right. And we can go over here to these two. And get those in place. And this guy here. Wonderful. And then opposite here. And you can see how precisely this is all going to fit. Now, there's going to always be a little bit of a variation depending on every single person's assembly. So if yours is slightly tighter or slightly looser, could just be how this piece was assembled. Could be how your machine cut it. So many different variables. Just go with what you have here and follow along. As long as you're close, should be fine. All right, and it just leaves a couple more here. So we'll close these up. Yeah, maybe a little more there. There we go. Just like that. And the last one. And there we go. Okay. So you'll notice that once we get that in place, that this is pretty, uh, pretty solid, actually. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our little panels on. And these are our panels. Now, find your top and find your bottom, okay? And you'll notice here that what's gonna happen is there are two little score lines at the top here. And we're gonna line this up with the score marks, and then obviously, as we bring this down, this little square here needs to match up with this square here, as does our little slit. And then this is where yeah, this one needs to go on the other side. This is where the bottom here is where the little feet are going to go. Okay, and that's going to terminate down at the bottom at half, uh, at the other half of this side of the little score mark. Okay, so should be able to bring that down all the way to that little score mark there. And the way we're going to accomplish that is very carefully. <laughs> First off, make sure again that you have the right piece and that all the slits and holes line up, okay? We're gonna begin by anchoring this to the top. So just throw some glue up at the very top and spread that glue out all the way to the very edge because it's gonna be one of the more important sections to get nice and flush, okay? So line that up to that little score mark there Get it nice and centered and press and hold. Now, before you completely commit, it may be helpful to double check and make sure that your square is sitting in the right spot. Okay, now if it's off a tiny bit, it's not the end of the world, but just make sure that, you know, see, I, I took this off too soon and the glue dried up on me. So I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on the glue here this time. That's what happens when I get busy blabbing and trying to demonstrate. I run out of time. Running out of time? How appropriate. Okay, so get that nice and lined up there and just press and hold at that seam. That is gonna be a very important seam to make sure we have nice and flat Okay, so don't rush that if you want. You can put that down on your table right at that little, little uh, top section and press from inside. But I think that looks good. Yeah, and the slit looks good and then the little leg works nicely and when I pull it nice and taut, it matches up with the bottom. So I've got it spot on. Now you'll notice that because this is segmented and this is smooth, you are gonna have some little gaps in here, but that's okay, because uh, we're gonna put a circle up on top to close it all off, so not a big deal there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue along the rest of this perimeter, especially down at the bottom, and then maybe a little bit in the center, because not all of this is actually going to be making contact with our piece here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a nice thin line 
along the edge. Don't go too thick. You don't want to warp the paper. Okay, and then just maybe a little bit in the center here. All right, so we're going to work that glue. We're going to work this piece down. Try to keep it nice and tight if you can. And make sure that it is centered on both sides. Keep on cruising here. And just match that up with that score mark at the bottom. I've got it pretty much right on. Okay, and that is looking pretty good. Okay, now we have one more piece going over this. So if, um, yeah, I can't really complain about anything on this. This looks great. Nice and flush here, nice and flush here, nice and centered. All of the little knockouts are lining up. This lined up nicely with the bottom tab, or bottom um, markers, I should say. And just don't let go of this prematurely so we don't have to put glue on it twice. Just be patient. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. Look at that. All right, so is that, are you dry? Are you sure? I hope you're dry. Okay. All right, so we'll move on to the other half here. And just like we did the first time, we're gonna line this up, but this time we're just gonna butt it up against the other one so that it's literally pressing up against it. Okay, double check and make sure that you've got the right piece and that you have it flip-flopped the correct way. Okay, again, I'm just testing this out, making sure that lines up, making sure the slit lines up, making sure the hole lines up, and then it should just meet down here at the bottom. And once I get this on a little more taut, it will stick. So just like we did the first time, I'm gonna start off with the top, just putting glue right up at maybe the first half inch or so. Spread that glue out nice and thin so it doesn't warp the paper. If you have too much on there, take a little bit off and go ahead and get it lined up. You want to butt it up against the first one. Make sure it's centered and just press and hold in place. Just like that. And don't let that go. Make sure that that sticks this time so I don't have to do it twice. Okay, patient, patience, patience, patience. There you go. That looks good. And again, we're going to have another piece on top of this. And it's going to be a lot easier to figure out how to get this uh, on there because it'll already be smooth for us. So don't worry about any imperfections at this point, especially up here. If you do have a little bit of um, warpage due to too much glue, and that's fine. I'm gonna do it this way. And just like last time, just get your glue along the perimeter, especially out here at the bottom. I'll just put this down for a second. And a little bit on the inside. I'm gonna take this bottom here and spread that glue out all the way. And again, just gonna wrap this around nicely. Try to keep it taut. Try to also make sure you keep it centered on both sides. And then it should match up nicely at the bottom with the previous piece. Mine's off by a tiny hair but I'm not worried about that because I'm not a robot. And I think that looks great anyway. It's pretty much spot on. As long as you keep it nice and taut so that it does in fact make contact with each of the little progressions here as far as the angles go, it should be fine. Okay, so this is probably most tedious part of this. The rest of it's fun. So just make sure you spend a little extra time and be a little extra patient with this because this is really what makes the project. The rest of it is essentially, um, you know, embellishments. 
for the most part. Okay. And that looks great. Okay, so it is now round. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put the panels in place. So this is where we get into the decorative part. That's our top. So essentially, same thing here. I'm gonna make sure that we line these up nicely. So this one's gonna line up exactly with the last one. And it's gonna go all the way down and around to the bottom, just like we did the first time, okay? Now, this paper is a little bit thicker, but I don't think I really wanna do anything to warp it. I might bend it a little bit right up at the top. Uh, but essentially what we're gonna have to do is just be very patient when we glue this down. So again, make sure you have the right panel on the right side and that the holes match up so that you don't put your glue on here and then end up with the wrong section. Okay, so just like we did with the first part, the actual structural piece, we're just gonna start with the top. We wanna make sure that that gets anchored as precisely as possible. It'll set the tone for the rest of the assembly. And you wanna line it up with very pretty much just the edge of that first piece. Make sure you have it nice and centered as well. If you need to justify left or right a little bit, now's the time. Okay, and just be patient and press and hold that down right up at the top until it's fully set. Okay, so our actual patterned panel is now anchored there at the top. And we're gonna do the same thing here and just bring it all the way down by just repeating what we did the first time with the structure. So start with some glue along the perimeter. I'm gonna go a little bit thicker. This is kind of a, whatever this method of printing is on this Graphic 45 paper, it's, it seems to, um, not absorb paper as much and, or I'm sorry, not, as, not absorb glue as much. It doesn't seem to warp as much either, which is nice. So I'm gonna spread that glue out nice and thin. And I also need to get a little bit more here at the bottom. I'm gonna get that, that glue out all the way to the very edges there. And just like we did the first time, I'm just gonna take this and just try to keep it nice and taut. as you're bringing this down on both sides. Make sure it's lining up with the little holes and that it's also nice and centered. And then just press that down right in the center there at the bottom. Yep, that looks good and that looks great. Just be patient here while the bottom sets. It's the most important part. It's really the only place you to apply pressure. Okay, and now it's starting to come to life. I'm excited here because, again, this was probably the, one of the more challenging parts of the assembly, and so far it is looking very sharp. Okay, so my bottom is nice and set for the most part. I've got one little area here that I think I should probably throw a little extra glue on so it doesn't come undone. So if you have a little area sticking off there at the bottom, just throw a little glue on a scrap piece of paper and just paint a little extra glue in that corner and press and hold that down. And this is uh, it's gonna be one of those dreaming tree statement pieces and we gotta make sure it looks really good. Okay, wonderful. All right, so back to this, same thing. Make sure you have the orientation correct. We're gonna make sure it's nice and centered and that it ma matches up nicely with the little cutouts, the knockouts. We'll start up at the top, just like we did the first time and get our glue on just the top, maybe half inch or so, maybe a third of an inch actually. That's fine. And then just work that glue out to the very edge. The very, very, very edge. And you wanna butt that up against the piece that's already there so that kind of making it, you know, 
seamless and just press and hold that area in place while it sets. Just kind of rub your fingers over that area. And that, based on how this was cut out too, we got these lines to match up nicely. So that's a bonus. I don't know if that was on purpose or by pure coincidence, but either way, that was very nice. Okay, just be patient. Again, this is the most important section here, as is the bottom. We want this to be nice and strong so that when we kind of pull on this a little bit to make it taut, it doesn't come ripping off. And plus, it's just very nice to see that crisp seam there. Okay, it looks like that's gonna hold. So I'll go ahead and flare this out and get my glue along the perimeter here. And I'll go here. I'll do a little bit in the middle here, not a whole lot. And then of course, at the bottom, where I need to spread that glue out to the very bottom. And just pull that glue out to the edges as well if you can. All right, and same thing here. Just pull it down, make sure it's nice and taut. I'm kind of using my thumbs here along the sides, the very edges, to press that down up against the previous layer that we glued down. And make sure it's centered. And that should meet up nicely at the bottom as well. It's funny how the stripes up at the top matched up, but they don't match up down here. How is that possible? What in the world? Huh. Oh, okay, I see what's going on. So yeah, I think that was just by sheer coincidence that we got it to match up like that. Okay, so continue applying pressure down here at the bottom. And these pretty much matched up perfectly. Uh, there's maybe a hair of a gap there, but that's fine. It's not, not going to make or break the project at all. Okay, I still feel like it's not set down at the bottom there, so just be patient. Make sure that it ain't going anywhere before we move on here. Okay, there we go. I think that's good. I think that was it. So as far as the orientation of these, you can see there's little Fs on these. And we just we want the legs to spread out. So you don't want them like this because then they're going to be kind of, uh, well, I guess those are kind of spread out too. Uh, but essentially you want them like this, okay, and not the other way around. So what we're going to do is literally just pop these through the bottom like so. And you can see the inside there where we're going to take the tabs and literally just glue that to the inside. So what you can do is just grab one of these tabs and flip it up and see that tab there. Okay, so you can see that tab there pointing to it right there. We're going to put some glue on that. Just a little bit. You don't need a lot. You can see the glue on that tab there. And we're going to take it and fold it over onto the inside of the structure here. Okay, so that's the first one. Just press and hold that down. You can see that tab there. That's the one I'm pressing down. I'm pinching on this side too. Okay, and then you can lift the tab on the opposite side there, right there, that one right there. And we're gonna put some glue on that, just like that. You can see the glue. And we're gonna take and fold that tab over onto the inside of our structure here. So whichever whichever way is easiest for you to, to hold it. You can see where my thumb is. That's the tab that I'm pressing down into place. And just press and hold that for a moment. And that just leaves these two tabs. This guy here. And this guy here. I'm going to fold those in and just put a little drop of glue on the tab there. I'm going to fold it. You can see the glue there. I'm going to take and fold it up against the inside there. And then I'm going to take this and fold it up against the inside there. 
Okay, so pretty self-explanatory once you get it in there. We're just using the tabs to anchor the feet. And did I do that right? Yep, I did. <laughs> Phew. All right, so there we go. And do the same thing with this. Just make sure that the F is facing you. Just pop that right through. Okay, and you can see the tabs there. We're gonna do the same thing. Whoops. Do the same thing with that one. You can see the tabs there. We'll fold the tab in. And we'll put some glue on this tab. And you can see that tab there with the glue on it. We'll take that and push it up against the inside of the structure. It's okay if it popped out. Just make sure it's still centered and in the right spot. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the tab opposite of where that first tab was there. There it is right there. Throw some glue on that, just a very little bit, and fold that over onto the inside of the structure. Okay, so that tab there now is glued down. And that just leaves these two on the side, just like we did the first time. You can see the two there, one, two, my thumb's hitting them. And just a couple little dots of glue there. And a few dots there. And then we'll just take and fold these over and fold that one over. And just press and hold that down until it's fully set. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so this is the back, this is the front, and our feet are in place. And that's actually how it's gonna sit up. You can see from this angle that it sits nicely with those little feet. Now, one more thing about the feet is that there are some little panels for the feet. We can get those in place now. And they look like this. And they're essentially the same. Uh, so this one's gonna go here. And we're gonna try to kind of butt that up into a little bit, kind of into the, um, well, you wanna push that up against this wall as close as you can so there's no black border on the legs on one side. Okay, so we'll throw some glue on this, like so. And just pop that into place, like that. There we go, you see that? There we go, just make sure you grab the right piece too. And then there's also one that goes on the back, just to pretty up the back too. So no matter what side you look at this, it's gonna look nice and polished and just well thought out and complete. Okay, get that nice and centered as well. There we go. All right, we're gonna flip it over find the remaining pieces here. So this one's gonna go, that one's gonna go there. Just throw a little bit of glue on this panel. And again, if you can kind of slide it in a little bit, that'll be nice, because it'll look very polished. You got a cat hair in there. Get out of there. Oh, cats. All right, and one more here. There we go. And we'll just pop that right in. Just make sure you keep an even border of black, in my case, black on at least three sides, and this side should be nice and flush there. Okay, coming together, guys, this is great. Okay, so that's that. Uh, the next thing we can do is put our little bell boxes in place. And this is what our little bells are gonna be glued to. Very similar to the legs. We're just gonna take these and kind of poke them through. It should pop in nice and easy. There we go. And you can see, just like we did with the legs, we've got those four tabs that we need to glue into place. So just pop these through. There we go. And 
I'm going to take these and flare these in. I guess we can't flare them all in. Let me grab my light again here. So you can see I've, I've folded the tabs in. I'll put some glue on these and show you what I'm doing here in just a second. Okay, so there's my first tab with some glue on it. And I'm gonna take that tab and push it over onto the inside of the structure. And I can just push from right here, using my middle fingers to push up, thumbs to push down. Okay, so that tab is now glued right there. And we'll bring this one in, we'll go opposite. And just throw a little bit of glue on it right there and fold that over and press and hold. And that just leaves two more little tabs. Okay, so we have this tab here and then the one, so this guy here and then this guy here. Just throw a couple dots of glue on that. Can come in from this side too and fold that over onto the inside of the structure. You can do both of these at the same time. Shouldn't be a problem. Okay. All right. So onto the other box here. Same deal. Just start off by anchoring one side. I've got glue on just that tab there. Okay. I don't know why it does that. There we go. Okay, we're gonna fold that over up against the inside. And we get that anchored, press and hold. There we go. And then bring it in, go opposite of the side we just glued down, which is that one there. And then fold it over up against the inside, press and hold. And that just leaves the two here. So we can fold those in, put some glue on them. So you can see the glue on the two tabs. And we're gonna take this and fold it in this way. And that one's gonna go out that way. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that from this side. It's just easier to hold it this way. And that's that, okay. So our bell boxes are in. So now what you'll notice that you will think you've probably already noticed when you saw the photo in the trailer is that the clock face isn't completely flat. There's actually, well, it's kind of indented. There's an extrusion. So we're going to assemble that. And then after that, it's pretty much a cakewalk. So we've got this piece here. Okay, this is our little extrusion piece. I've already folded all of the tabs here. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is glue this together to form one long piece. So you've got one tab here. I'm gonna throw some glue on that. And I'm gonna hit that with my finger, thin it out a little bit, grab the other side and line that up as accurately as you can. And it's kinda of hard to see that fold. There it is. And press and hold that down for just a moment. Okay. I'm gonna fold this over onto itself because Based on how the tabs align, you can tell if you did a good job getting this thing completely lined up. And that's what happens when you fold these a little too soon. Okay, that looks good. It's going to be pretty important that we get this lined up accurately. We don't want it too big or too small. You want to try to hit that right in the right spot there, make it one long piece. And you can see pretty much from top to bottom when I lay this flat on itself, all these little teeth line up nicely with each other. So that means that I pretty much hit it on the head, getting the little seam here lined up. Okay, so I'm left with one long piece now. And we're gonna take and close it up now with the other tab on the other side. So throw a little bit of glue on this guy here. And then bring this over. You can actually do this flat. Just get that lined up like so. The tab is tucked underneath. So essentially, I that's yeah, right back here. You can see the tab there. Making one continuous circle here. And you know, let me see if I got that right. So again, when these sit flat on top of each other, they should be 
exactly on top of each other and that means that you've got it lined up pretty much as accurately as it's going to get okay so there it is there is our continuous piece okay so we've got this piece here it looks like a little monster's mouth and what we're going to do is we're going to take our clock face and we're going to pop it in there and that's naturally going to create a circle. Just got to get these tabs all the way around so we can slide this in completely. It's going to be a little tight, but it's fine. Okay, so that's in. And now, just push that in all the way so that these tabs are up against the very back of this. Okay, so that's essentially what it should look like. And then we're just going to take and start gluing these tabs down to the clock face. So just a couple dots here. Don't go too crazy with the glue. And just throw a couple dots there, fold that over, and just press and hold that down for a second. Same with this. And as you're pushing this down, just make sure that this is nice and flush up against this black piece. Okay. So there we have those two. And then we're going to kind of go opposite here and get some glue here on these tabs and push that over. Same with that, just press that down. You can actually, it's probably easier if you just push down from the inside so you don't go warping this or accidentally tearing it. Okay. Just make sure that's nice and in there all the way down, just like that. Okay, so we've got these two and these two glued down. So just go over to this side somewhere. We're just kind of trying to stagger this a little bit so we're not doing it all in one area at the same time. Fold these down. Just kind of remember which ones they are. And you can push down from the inside to get that tab to really take hold. Okay, so there they are. Now we're going to go over here. So opposite of where those were. A couple little dots, nothing too crazy. Press those down, you can put them down on your surface. Press down from the inside. There we go. And you get the idea here. Well, oh, that one didn't take. Okay. There we go. And just grab a couple wherever at this point. I think it's pretty much set in place. We just need to finish the rest of these tabs. And we'll just do a couple at a time just to make sure you're not missing any. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to go over this way. Get these two. Tuck those under. Press that down. There we go. And we just got to get all these in place. We got quite a few to go here. Okay, I'll just fold those over. I'm doing three at a time now, and that's okay. This is going to look really cool once it's all done. All right, so moving on here, I'm going to do these three. There we go. Fold those over. Set them under. Make sure you tuck them under before you press down. And yeah, this is going to look really good. Okay. All right. I got a couple here. Let's do those. You get the idea. So, uh, I'm trying to think here. What else do we need to do? I gotta make sure that I put his little pupils in place. I'll do that. This is, um, actually, and this is optional, you don't have to do it, but we're using acetate to kind of create the illusion of glass. 
And again, that's up to you if you want to do that or not. But once we do that, it's going to be sealed and we're not going to be able to get back inside there. So if you are also using acetate to recreate the feel of glass, um, well, you want to make sure that anything that you want to do to the clock face, uh, you do at a certain point here. And I'll tell you when. Still have a little bit of time to make any adjustments to the face if you want to add anything or whatnot. Okay, so I've got two there. I'm going to fold those over, press those down. <clears throat> and I've got one left. Not bad. Well, actually, that one should have already been down, but it just didn't take, and that's okay. Just make sure we get them all. And there we go. Okay, so that is nice and solid. And now what we're going to do is we're going to fold these tabs out. So we're going to take this, we're going to slide this inside of the front opening and get these tabs glued to the actual structure. And then the rest of it is really just kind of cleaning up. Okay, so again, FL, FL, that's the front. BL, BL, that's the back. This obviously won't even fit in here. You want to slide it in through the front and it should fit perfectly, like, like bam. Okay, so that does in fact fit perfectly. And um, well, <clears throat> now that the clock is actually, you can actually sit it up, make sure that when you put the face in, that the 12 is nice and centered. So you can actually use this little seam here where the two panels joined to kind of make sure that you've got the correct placement for your clock face. Okay, mine looks spot on. You can also use the bottom seam to make sure that the six is in the right spot and just make any little minor tweaks that you need before we commit to keeping this in place. So I'm gonna just keep my hand there while I take and put glue on this tab right here at the 12. I'll bring this up and press that down and I'm gonna hold that in place for a moment while it sets. Now, normally I would want to, and I may actually have to just push up from the inside there to make sure that does stick. Eh, it's actually, it, was, it was actually sticking without it, so that's fine. Okay, make sure that's Got a good grip and then go down to the six. Nice little dot of glue there. Fold that over and hold that in place because it is kind of, it's, it's a little wobbly. So you have to get your finger in from underneath to push up against that like so. There we go. And my, my top one came loose. I wasn't, I wasn't holding it long enough and you don't want to make that same mistake. You got to get this anchored in place. Okay, so be patient while that sets. So I had to re-glue the top part because I kind of rushed and it came undone. So don't do that. <laughs> don't be like me, take your time here. We've got uh, a really odd shaped thing. Not so much odd shaped, but I'm trying to glue something to something that isn't completely stabilized. We got to get our hand back there to kind of push up against my thumb here to make sure that things really grab and hold nicely. Okay, so that looks like that's going to stick. Now, I always worry about when I have to apply glue to something twice because it didn't stick the first time, you actually have a, more of a tendency of it not holding because it's not, it's not being glued to paper, it's being glued to glue. So try not to make that mistake. Now I'm at the bottom now and I'm going to spend a few extra seconds here holding this in place, making sure that it gets a really good grip before I move on here. Okay. Just want to make sure I get it anchored and then the rest of it is going to go very smoothly for us. I'm sure. There we go. Okay. So now as far as anchoring goes, I would move over to one of the sides now. So I'm gonna go over here to the right, just a very thin amount of glue. We'll make this process that much easier. 
and fold that over. And from underneath, I got my finger right in that spot underneath pushing up so that it makes good contact there. And just keep holding that until it's fully set. Once we get these four in place, the rest of it will go very smoothly. So now we're going to move over to this side and get this side anchored. So again, try to get a finger underneath there and push that down and over. Literally my other pointer finger is underneath this little tab here, pushing up to make sure that it gets a good grip on that paper. And now the rest of this is starting to kind of pull itself up. The rest of these tabs should go a little bit quicker. You don't have to spend as much time on each one. Okay, so we got top, down, left, right. Uh, I'm gonna go back here now at the, well, looks like the uh, one o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally right there. Okay, put some glue on that, bring it over and press and hold. And you can see that's already not moving as much when I press down because we've got four tabs doing some lifting here. Okay, so that's good. But I would still maybe just spend a few extra seconds on these tabs to make sure they stick. Okay, then I'm gonna go opposite. I'm gonna go down here. I'll grab this tab, just a little dot of glue. And fold that over, press and hold. Okay, and we'll go opposite and just throw a little bit of glue on there. Maybe just a dot more and fold that over, press and hold. So you get the idea. Uh, essentially all we're gonna do to finish up this section is just go around gluing down the rest of these tabs and then we can start doing some fun stuff and finishing this thing up. It's literally just putting a few panels on to close up and hide all these tabs. And uh, of course, we've got a little clock mechanism that we still have to install. Okay. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make you watch me do this. Literally, just go around and kind of stagger the gluing on these don't always do the same section, kind of bounce around up, down, left, right, and do it that way until all of these tabs are glued into place and then we can move on to the next section. Okay, so as you, uh, like I said, as you begin to get more and more of these glued down, it does go a lot faster because there's less movement on the structural piece up and down things kind of stay in place more. And that is what that's gonna look like. So again, it looks kind of rough around the edges here on the front and the back, but not for long, because in just a moment here, uh, we're gonna be putting some nice covers on this. And that's what that's gonna look like once it's all done. Same with the back, it'll look nice and polished here. Um, so a couple things here. Um, first thing that we're gonna do is I'm actually going to put our I'm going to put our wings in place here. Okay, so let's do that. <clears throat> and what we're going to do first, you want to find each matching pair. So again, there's going to be a front and a back to the wings here. So I've got my first matching pair. They should be they should mirror each other. Okay, and what we want to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is put a little bit of glue on just the intersection here. You don't want to put glue on the tabs just yet. Just on this section here, like so. And take this section and match that up nicely. And make sure that the tabs are matched up nicely, like so. Okay, just like that. Okay, so we've got the other wings that we need to put together here. Now, one thing I did between cuts here was add my little pupils there. So we're gonna do the same thing with these wings here. I'm gonna take our glue and just put glue on this little area here. Okay, and then 
put these back to back, just line up that bottom section there as well as the little tabs here. Just make sure that those are just like that. Just press that together. Okay. There we go. Press these down and Essentially, what we're going to be doing is taking the wings, we're going to be putting them through these little slots here, okay, like that. And then just like we did with the legs, we're going to take these tabs and glue them to the inside of the structure. Okay, so you can start off by, well, you can actually, I'm going to bring this in a little bit so you can see it better. And I'm going to start off by putting glue on the center one, just the center tab right there. I'm just going to take that, and we're going to push that up against the inside of the wall here. I'll show you what it looks like here in just a second. I'm squeezing the tab between my two fingers to press that into place. I'll show you what the end result looks like here in a second. Okay, so you can see that tab now is glued to the inside of the structure. So I'm going to go up to the top now. I'm going to put glue, just a little dot, right there on that tab. And I'm going to take it and we're going to flip it to the inside of this structure. And again, I'm just, I'm pressing and looking at it from the outside. But I have that tab sandwiched between my thumb and my middle finger here. And I'll show you. There you go. There's the other one. Okay. So just have to put glue on the rest of the tabs and fold them over into place. At this point, now that it's anchored, I don't really think it matters which one you do. I'm going to do the big one here. You can see I'm going to take it and just push it up against the inside of the structure. And there's just three more little tabs left here. I'll just do one at a time. There's that one. Push that over to the inside and press and hold. Of course, we're going to have to do this for both sides. And throw a little glue. I'm just going to do the last two here at the same time. Okay, that one is going to go into place. And then the last one, and I will show you the inside here in just a second. There we go. You can see all six of those little tabs are now glued into place, and that is what the wing is going to look like. Okay, so now we also have two more little decorative pieces and I want to make sure that we find the correct ones. Okay, so they're going to go like this and then this one's going to go here and this one's going to go here like that. So we need to take this and we're going to glue this right here. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to bring this one all the way up. Okay, so the top of this, the top of this piece is going to be flush with the top of the existing piece here. Okay, and all we need to do is put glue on just this very inner part here. You don't need to put glue on the whole thing because we've already trained it to kind of give it some dimension. So that would kind of defeat the purpose. So let's get that one in place. You want to push that up against the clock as far as it'll go. Like that. And just press down right in the corners there. Make sure you, if you need to, grab a little dowel to help you really push that down right along the very inside. Okay. And then we have one more piece that's going to go literally right on top of that, right there, like so. Now, if you need to, because it lost a little bit of its curl, just kind of fold that in a little bit and give that a little bit of an extra curve. Okay, so we'll flip this over. And again, just working on the very inside here. Now, I'm gluing glitter to glitter. So this may take a little extra time to fully set. So don't rush it if you're doing the same thing here. And that's going to go right on top of the previous layer. Nice and flush. Try to push that up against that wall as far as it can go. Just like that. Okay, and again, glitter on glitter, 
So you want to be patient if you're doing the same here. And if you need to use a tool or something like this to, to push it into place, now's the time to do that. Okay, so that wing is looking great. Now we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So we're going to squish these together and slide them in through the little slit. And we're going to glue the little tabs to the inside of our structure. And again, it doesn't matter which one you start with. I'm going to probably just start with the center one there. There it is right there. And you're going to take that and fold it over onto the inside and just press and hold that in place until it is fully anchored. Try to get it centered in the slit too, if you can. I put way too much glue on there, so it's sliding around, slips side and away, like Mr. Paul Simon would say. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so you can see that tab is glued down. Now I'm gonna just go over to this one here on the opposite side, throw a little bit of glue on there, and then we're gonna take and push that over onto the inside of the structure. And I can push that in, just kind of sandwich it, squeezing from both sides, like so. Almost there. Okay, and we'll go over here to this one, throw a little bit of glue, on that tab, a little more, and we'll push that one over. Where'd it go? Oh, that's my finger with glue on it. There it is, and we'll push that over onto the inside, and press and hold. There we go. Okay, and that just leaves three more tabs. Same thing, just throw a little bit of glue on each one and then fold it over onto the inside, press and hold. Yeah, this one's a little more involved, but I mean, what can you say? Uh, I've never really seen a clock like this, and it's cool because, you know, time flies. Uh, it's a very whimsy. I think it'll be, be great for a boy or a girl's room. It can make a great gift too, even. And go ahead and fold that over. And press that down and that looks like the glitter part of the wing is holding nicely so that's good and just one more large tab here get that glued down way too much glue on there okay and push that over press it up against the inside and there we go okay all right so that wing is in place now and just like we did the first time. Now, if you want, if it's easier for you, if you want to take and glue this smaller section to the larger section before you actually put it in place, you can do that. Just remember to align these top sections together. Make sure that they're flush all the way up and down and let that set first and then we can just all we have to do is then glue the one piece down i mean either way it's the same amount of gluing just showing you that there's more than one way of doing it and it's not necessarily wrong okay i'm gonna peel this back a little bit get a little more dimension to it and i'm gonna let this set while i show you something that we have to do um, to help stabilize our clock mechanism so we are using a little bit of foam core in this and in your when you when you're cutting things out you're going to come across a piece like this this is a little template and essentially what we're going to do with this template is just put it on top of our foam core and with an exacto knife just going to kind of cut around it just following the template and i already have these two sides straight so i'm kind of just doing the bare minimum here and cutting two sides only. Okay, and if it's not perfect, it's not a big deal. It can actually probably be off by, uh, you know, like a quarter inch and you'd still be okay. So cut that out just like that. And then we do have to put a little hole in the center. This is where the actual mechanism is gonna go. 
Okay, so the best way of doing that, I think, is just kind of creating a little X or a cross, and then maybe do some piece of slices. Again, this doesn't have to be pretty. No one's gonna see this part. This is just mostly structural. And then you can just kind of take your X-Acto and just cut in a circle. You can use that template to kind of make it prettier. And they say you're supposed to cut away from yourself, but I'm just living on living on the edge here. Okay, so just pop that out. Again, it doesn't matter if you rip some of the paper backing off. It's, it doesn't really matter. It's all it's just structural. Okay, but that's a pretty, pretty nice, pretty nice job there. Almost looks like a mini bean or mini cornhole set. You know what I mean? For our Midwesterners that play cornhole. Okay, so this should be glued and set. And we're going to pop that right into place, just like we did the other side. Just like that. Okay, so go ahead and throw a little bit of glue on the back of this, just on the very edge here. Okay, and let's get that nice and aligned. And just press that up against the clock as far as you can, as far as it'll go. If you need to, I like to use an X-Acto to kind of push things. It really grips it because it's got a nice fine point. You can really push that up against the project there. Okay, there we go. And I don't have to worry about the glitter on glitter situation here. Okay, so look at that. It's really coming together now. Okay, so this is our clock mechanism. And I'm gonna flip this over real quick. Now this little piece that we just cut out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hot glue this to the inside. And we want this flat part to be resting on the bottom here. So it's kind of taken the weight off of, um, it'll help kind of distribute the weight a little bit when we get that mechanism on there so it doesn't cause the face to sag or rip or anything like that. So all we need to do for that is just take a little bit of hot melt glue. And I mean, that's probably more than enough. Hot glue just goes a long way here. So take that. Pop that in, make sure that the bottom is resting on the bottom and then just pop it into place so that the little hole we created matches up with the hole on the face. There we go, just like that. Okay, there you go. And now we can take our little mechanism and there's a little there's a little nut on here that you want to unscrew. And we're going to pop that into place. Whoa, what was that? Oh, that's our washer. I'll leave the washer on there. Okay, we're going to feed that through. Hello. Okay, make sure that it's right side up, although I don't think it really matters too much. Push that through as far as it'll go. And we're going to take this, this little nut and just screw that on. That's what holds it in place. It kind of sandwiches the whole thing. And just tighten that up. Not too much, just enough. There we go. Okay. And if you have this little gear, you got to take that off and then just slide. It may help to get your hand in there and hold the whole mechanism steady. Throw our our hand on, that fits nicely. And then we'll put our minute hand on and that needs to slide on in a specific way. It only goes on one way, you gotta figure out. It looks like it's round, but it's not completely round. It's, there we go, just like that. Okay, there we go. Great. 
And then we can cover that up with the little gear. And that is when we put our second hand in. Close that up, just press that into place. And it's already ticking. Look at that. Okay. And just take a look at the second hand. Looks like the second hand's moving ever so slightly. And I'm sure that the, the minute hand is gonna be fine. So now we have a little heart that we cut out and that's actually gonna go right in the center for his nose. Okay, so you can either do hot glue, probably would do hot glue on that. And we're gonna glue that right to the center of the mechanism. Okay, so just get a little bit of hot glue on there. So as I mentioned, I think just a little bit of hot glue, just a single dot in the center should do. And just try to make sure that you get that heart nice and centered, nice and flat for his nose. There you go. There we go. Cute. Okay, so all that's left to do now is close up the front and the back. I'm gonna leave my hot glue on. We're gonna need that for the bell. Bells, I should say. Okay, so that's looking pretty fly. Look at that. And it's only gonna look better once we close everything up. Okay, so the front, We've got this little piece here with the letter F on it on all four sides. Okay, we're gonna put that right on the front like so to close that up and make it look nice and clean. And our main goal here is just to, gonna make sure to, well, just get it as aligned as possible. Okay, and if we get a little bit of glue warpage on this because we're going heavy on the glue, that's okay. We have two more layers that are gonna go on top of it, so don't worry too much about it. I'm gonna do a nice semi-thick line around the perimeter here. And of course, I'm gonna use my fingers to spread that glue out. And then also around the interior. Okay and just work that glue out to the perimeter. And if we need to kind of touch this up using our little trick, we can do that. Get that glue on there. It's okay if it's a little heavy. Like I said, we're gonna cover that up anyway. Try not to get glue on top of the actual uh, top. Okay, so this is a, uh, this doesn't really matter where the letter orientation is too much. Just make sure you get it on there and it's nice and centered. And then kind of take a look at it from various angles as well. Make sure that it is nice and flush going all the way around. And if you have a little bit of glue that's seeping out, just wipe it off with your finger, no big deal. And just press that down. Okay. I'm mostly concerned about making sure that the exterior is nice and flush. So focus your efforts on that. The inside may be drooping a little bit and that's okay. I'm not really gonna see that because we've got another piece that's gonna go around and gonna kind of cover up that seam here. You can see this piece is a little bit wider, so you're not even gonna see that inside piece. But still need a little bit of glue on that. So again, take a look at your, your seam going all the way around. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, whoops, not good. Get that off there. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our acetate in place. So this is essentially our glass. So again, make sure that if you need to do anything to this, you do it now or forever hold your peace because we're not gonna be able to get in there afterwards. And if you have any blemishes on this, 
You might want to clean them off too. Okay. All right, so that looks good. So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna do little dots of glue going around the entire interior here, like so, just like that. Let me just drop that into place. And press that down all the way around, like so, and let that set. I'm gonna take a look at my perimeter here again, make sure that everything is making good contact. And I did use a lot of glue there, so technically some of this might still be drying, which is fine, it gives me a little extra time. Okay, so now we're gonna cover that up with this piece, essentially the same thing we just did with the other piece here. Now this time, we're gonna take and we're gonna put glue on this whole thing. Okay, so flip it over and begin putting your glue on this whole thing, nice and thin. You don't need to go too crazy now. We've got the structure there. It's all sitting nicely for us. Just pop that right on there. Make sure you match it up with the center. And again, make sure it's nice and flush around the perimeter, like so. If you, by chance, have a little bit of glue that seeped out onto your acetate, just clean that up. And run your finger along the perimeter. Now, if yours is not looking super perfect, don't worry about it because we have one more trick up our sleeve to kind of clean up the edges. Mine's looking great, actually. Mine's very seamless. Um, but we're gonna take some of this and actually hot glue it around the perimeter here to cover up that seam if you, by chance, have a seam like that. But mine actually could probably do without, but we're still gonna add it because it adds a really nice touch to it. All right, and then finally, we've got a silver piece that's gonna go on like this, and I know sometimes some machines have some issues cutting perfect circles, so you may want to kind of rotate this a little bit and find the best fit for your cut. It looks like that might be mine right there. So we're gonna glue that on. Okay, so flip this over and apply our glue. So this section, and be careful with the glue here. You don't want too much on here in case some of it does squirt out and end up, well, actually, no, this is, this is far enough away where it's not gonna end up on your acetate. So that's fine. All right, kind of go around, make sure that that is nice and lined up. And look at that, that is looking awesome. Okay, just press and hold that down for a moment. Let it set. Okay. There we go. Wonderful. <clears throat> okay, wow. I don't know what I'm doing today, but I'm doing good. That looks great, look at that. Okay, all right, so now uh, that's the front. So we can flip this over and we're gonna do the same thing with the back. So find the piece that has bees all the way around it and that's gonna go on here. And just like we did the first time, I'm gonna go kind of heavy with the glue around the perimeter here. Because again, if we, if we warp it here, it's not a big deal because we've got three more layers that are going on top of it. So, and then of course, do a little bit around the inside and take that glue, just kind of brush it out to the very, very edge here. All the way out 
out to the edge. Okay, just like that. Make sure you don't get any on the surface of your pattern paper, your beautiful pattern paper. All right, and then this piece with all the bees on it, pop that right in place. Make sure it's nice and aligned all the way around. Hold on a second here. And again, focus your focus on pressing this down right at the very seams here. Take a look at your work. Make sure everything is sitting nice and flush. I think my I'm gonna say that my uh, little silver piece on the front is maybe not completely glued down. I might have to fix that. That's okay. All right, so. Make sure everything's making good contact there all the way around. And again, if you have a little bit of a gap, don't lose any sleep over it. We're gonna clean that up with, uh, with some twine here. Or some braid, I should say. All right. Okay. And there's my little area there. You see that's kind of pulling back. So I'll just grab a scrap piece of paper, throw a little glue on there, and literally just lift this up, paint a little extra glue in this area, and just press that down to place. All right, so that's in place. That looks good. Next layer is gonna be our black layer, and that's gonna go right on the back. You wanna make sure that the heart is at the 12 o'clock. And we don't wanna put any glue on this part, nor do we wanna put any glue on the heart. So just on this section here. So let's do that. Let's get our glue on this guy here. All the way out to the edges around the heart. Look at that perimeter. Okay, and again, make sure your heart is at the 12 o'clock. So if you need to kind of prop it up like that, line that up with the center circle in here. That's a good way of knowing that you got it in the right spot. And just press that all the way around. Just like that. Just hold that in place for a moment. There we go. Make sure the seams are making good contact. There we go. Then you can also kind of squeeze here all the way around to make sure that the inner part is making good contact as well. <clears throat> now what we did is we used a little bit of Velcro to keep this thing closed up. So just cut some of these tiny little Velcro circles. And what you can do is take it, and actually I'm gonna put it right here first. One second here. Put your Velcro there, and then peel this back. The other half of it is on there already. All right, well that doesn't wanna peel off, so I'm gonna peel that off manually. I'll stick that right on where it needs to be. And then I can take the heart and just press it down onto that other half of the Velcro. And then it'll peel back in the exact spot it needs to be. And now we've got a nice little door on there. It's gonna hold that closed for us. Okay, so that's the next layer. And that's all in place. So we've got two more layers here. We've got this pool colored layer, which is the original color of our main structure. Let's get that glued into place. Okay. And get that glued down. You just wanna match this up with the little heart there. Make sure it's nice and centered. The rest of it should be flush with the black layer. There we go. 
now. That's a little bit off. There we go. Okay, so just kind of run your fingers along the perimeter again. Make sure it's making good contact all the way around. Okay. And again, you can pop this open and kind of squeeze from the inside if you need to, just like that. Okay, looking good. And that just leaves this last layer here, the silver layer, to close this up, close it off. And take a look at this. That looks great. Okay. And get our glue on this last little piece here. And then really all that's left to do is put our little hammer on top. And then I'm gonna show you how I made the bells. I'm not actually gonna walk you through that because it's pretty non-papery and also pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so get that on there. You wanna kind of match that up with the little shape of the heart. Press that down into place. Okay, so clock is almost done. Now, again, remember when we made uh, this little guy? This little guy is just gonna go right on top in the center, and you wanna kinda use that center line as your guide for placement. So let's do that. Just throw some glue on the bottom of this piece, and I'm gonna work that glue out to the very ends and edges here so that when I do put it down, none of it's lifting up at all. And again, make sure you center it this way and also just use that center line to help you with the placement as well. And then just press and hold that down. Let that glue really get it. Grab it really good. Okay. And then finally, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you what I did with and how we created the bells. And those are here. I've already prefabricated these just because they involved glitter and uh, paint. Um, so essentially what he did was took a styrofoam ball. We have the dimensions for you in the supply list. I cut it in half and then I painted it with some metallic um, silver paint. And while that paint was still wet, um, I well, actually I let the paint dry and sprayed it with some um, adhesive spray, sprinkled glitter on it, and then also um, put a little ribbon around the bottom here, not quite to the end, just a little bit above it, and then just um, took two purple pearls, glued them together, and then hot glued this to the top. And what we're gonna do is we're just literally gonna hot glue these to these little black boxes to make them permanent. And of course, um, one other thing too, is we've got this braid here. We're gonna take this and I'm going to hot glue it to the, well, I'm gonna, I'll show you where, in case you wanna do it. You don't have to, I mean, the project's done once you get the bells on it, but I'm gonna glue this around the perimeter here, like so. Okay, and again, that's gonna cover up the little seam there and also add kind of a, a cute little flare to it. Okay, so that's gonna go all the way around on both the front and the back. And then of course, just a little bit of hot glue here for the bell. I'm gonna do two bells and that's pretty much it, so. Okay, so I just put on the finishing touches here. I'll go over what I did. Uh, you can see that I've got some nice, um, well, some nice braided twine here uh, around the perimeter on the front and the back. I took the little bells that I created out of styrofoam and glitter and paint and hot glued them to the little black boxes that we assembled. And then I also added some rhinestones around the perimeter here to line up with all the numbers as well as the hearts to kind of simulate what you would see on a real clock. And then of course on the back, uh, added just a little rhinestone there. And you can see there's the mechanism there. The little dial here will allow you to set the clock to whatever time you want it to be. And 
that's it. So this is um, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more involved than usual, but of course, I mean, look at the end result. It's definitely a one of a kind sort of piece. You're not gonna see anything else like this out there anywhere. And you can say you made it yourself uh, to whoever gets it and well, I'm sure will love it. And it's practical too. Um, obviously you can, you know, select colors to coordinate with your child's grandchild's niece's nephew's room. Um, so it can really, really be a custom piece anyway. Uh, it's beautiful, and I know our kids are going to love it, that's for sure. And I'm not sure who's going to get this one. We'll see. But either way, I had a blast. I hope you did too. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please head on over to our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit the little bell, ding, ding, so that you get notifications anytime we release a new video. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I would love to see it. And so would the, I think 25,000, well, I think it's more than that now. Anyway, uh, a whole bunch of amazing artists and dreamers on the official group on Facebook. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group and um, join us. So that's it for this one. It's now time for me to move on to my next project, but I look forward to crafting with you again.